For the past 14 years of my life, I've been coming to terms with the fact that I have Asperger's syndrome. It's a milder form of autism which can create difficulties when trying to converse with people or expressing emotions. However, I feel I've taken great strides over the past few years, especially when it comes to dealing with daily life and the struggles of living with Asperger's. Now I want to see what it's like for those around me who have had to deal with the reality of being close to someone who lives with autism and what it means. Now I want to see what it was like for those around me when I was growing up who had to deal with the reality of being close to someone who lives with autism. I want to see what it's like for an outsider's perspective on those who consider themselves outsiders. I've come to meet with Emily Johnson, a 23-year-old nursery worker from Salford who's only just recently begun to experience what it's like to truly be around autistic children. Well, it's challenging, but at the same time, it's really rewarding in the sense of there's days where it's really, really stressful, but also when they reach certain milestones or do activities they never did the day before, it can it makes you really proud of them. We have play plans set in place for different children. So with autism, we have a different play plan set out for them. So they get that one-to-one -one care that they probably wouldn't have in other nurseries, um, which will just help them reach milestones better and help them have more care and understanding, really. It's made me understand autism a bit better, especially in younger years, with it not being diagnosed really until about two, maybe five. It's made me think that the child isn't just naughty, they actually have problems set in place and that it takes a longer time for them to understand certain situations, especially social ones. Some key signs for spotting autism in children early can be such things as delayed speech and language skills, avoiding eye contact, they even have difficulty understanding others' feelings or simple things that they don't respond to their own name by the time they reach 12 months. I've also had the privilege of meeting with a family whose son suffers with autism, however they do wish to remain anonymous. I knew from a very young age, because um, everything they, that they did was slightly different to, to most, and it, it just had little um, weird habits that were just, for me, were just him. Um, but it got to a point where uh, there were things that we couldn't really deal with. Um, and so we felt the need to go and, and try and explore this, this. I don't want to say weirdness because it, it's not weirdness because it, it, it is just them um, as far as I was concerned. Um, but yeah, it was becoming more obvious that there was things that was happening that was weird to others. So in order to get the help <coughs> needed, um, especially with going on to secondary school, um, we were not forced into getting a diagnosis, but our li the life choices we had, we, we didn't really have much option but to. And what was life like for you after? After the diagnosis? Yeah. Mm, nothing changed. Nothing changed. It just made it easier to, to explain to people at school and for the transition to secondary school. Um, it just gave teachers um, something to look out for so that extra care was given when dealing with certain situations. But nothing changed with regards to, to me and how I brought, brought him up, really. Nothing. The world doesn't seem a scary place to me anymore like it did when I was a child. But for many kids today, the world can still be a scary place, especially to those who suffer with autism. But with the love and support of those around them, such as friends and family, the world can be just a little less scary. For further help and information, please see your local GP or go to www.autism.co.uk.